Hey, Charlie Pyatt here with the third episode of the custom AR VR build. Last time I took a look at the Oculus hardware and started the first steps in the digital 3D work of the design. Doing the teardown of the Oculus in the last episode was a really big step. So much of this design is going to be driven by that core Oculus hardware that I really needed to get familiar with it. Having it reverse engineered back into the CAD made it so I could start making some legitimate design choices that were not just purely conceptual. Now that I have the first round of CAD work done, I want to take a second to build a quick mock-up to see what the proportions of the design are looking like. This step is really important in making sure the overall size of the design is still where I want it to be. At the end of the last episode, I got a rendering together that showed some of the materials and colorway options to make sure I was still happy with the direction things were going in. I'm still really satisfied with the way this is all progressing, but now I want to make sure the scale and proportions of this thing are still okay. So, when you're building stuff out in CAD, the screen is constantly trying to trick you. It's very easy to think something is coming together great, then get a physical prototype back and have it just be 10% too big or simply not look that good in reality. There are ways to help to avoid this. When I'm working, I always have a ruler and calipers next to me, so as I enter dimensions, I can constantly look over and see in real space how big something will look. This only helps so far though, and at a certain point you really have to get a 1 to 1 scale model in your hands to make sure the things are not going off the rails. I feel like this concept is at a point where I need to do that, so I'm going to make a paper model of the current design and do a reality check on the whole thing. So we have the design in Fusion 360 here, and there are a number of ways to get it out into physical space to see what the form will be like. The default easy way is just to 3D print a copy of whatever we have so far. This has some annoying drawbacks though. 3D printing this enclosure would probably take me 9 hours or more, plus time for cleaning up the model. There are also a bunch of parts that I would have to merge or print separately and glue up. This would take a pretty serious amount of time and cost me in printing materials, which would just be a waste. I also don't need or want this to be a perfect detail model. The design is not anywhere near finished, so I just need a general idea of the overall form looks like in reality. This is where doing a paper model comes in. I can really quickly output this and see if I need to make any major changes to the form before continuing. To do this, I'm going to make a new drawing inside of Fusion. Pretty much every parametric modeling software has some sort of drawing package creator for taking 3D designs and getting them into 2D drawings for manufacturing. I'm going to bring this model into an 8.5 by 11 sheet and then set the model scale to 1 to 1. In this case, I don't need any of the title block stuff, so I'm just going to delete that out. I have a front view now, and it looks like I can fit a side view on the same sheet, so this is all working out. Now I can just save out my sheet as a PDF file, and we are good to go. So right, I just sent these over to my office laser printer. I have to remember to make sure the scale to fit to page is turned off, so the size stays true to the digital model in 3D space. I'm also printing a couple of extra copies of this because I will need to cut out some infill parts in the next steps and for safety in case I mess something up somewhere. Next step is to rough cut these parts out of the paper. The way this is going to work is that I'll glue the paper to cardboard then trim them all out again. After that I will hot glue all the flat parts together and make a complete rough model. At this point it's kind of tricky to imagine how all these parts will build up to make the final model, but I'm sure it'll come together fine in the end. Most of these are going to be recut later, so I don't need them to be precise at all at this point. I'm trying to think this through as I go on how I'm going to assemble this thing. I have extra parts and it's easy to make changes, so I can just wing it for now. Great, so the paper is cut and I'm just going to glue it up to an old cardboard box I have laying around. If I was doing this for a client or internally at a company, I would class things up by doing this on white foam core, but eh, this is fine. I'm using Super 77 spray adhesive here to put my paper on the cardboard. Just going around and making sure I'm gluing up to the flat portion of the box, not over the seams or the creases or anything. Didn't show it here, but after I finish gluing these up, I'm just going to cut it out with a pair of scissors just to get the parts smaller so I can do the fine trimming back inside. Now that I've got the paper on cardboard, I just need to do a more precise cutout pass and then glue things up. I'm just following the lines with an X-Acto at this point to get my clean finished parts. So 
So stepping back for a second here, I could have just taken that original PDF I had and cut everything out directly from the cardboard with a laser cutter and saved a bunch of steps. But honestly, I think I've committed all of 20 minutes of time for doing this so far, so it's just not that big of a deal. Prepping the vector for laser cutting would have probably taken a little longer. Even with all the tech, sometimes it's just easier and more satisfying to do things by hand. Doing things this way also gets me familiar with the components and sizes of the design that's kind of tough to explain. The experience I get from cutting everything out by hand just gives me a better feel for the size of things and how they will fit together for the finished product. Now I'm on to using a hot glue gun and a bit of profanity to get the final form together. I'm using those extra parts to make internal supports for sliding and some scrap cardboard to make extra tabs and connection points. Again, this is obviously not a high precision model. I didn't do stuff like take into account the cardboard thicknesses in the build or anything fancy like that. This is just to give me a nice close enough for now type model of what this will be. So yeah, there we are. In 30 minutes or so, I've gone from I wonder how big this really is to having it sitting on my desk. I'm placing it next to the old Oculus 2 enclosure for reference, and it's really nice to have that side-by-side -side comparison to a real-world product. You can see the front of the new design sticks out past the Oculus enclosure, and that's to house the extra camera and tracking hardware. I was worried about this making the headset too bulky, but after seeing it in space, I feel like it'll be fine. Because that front area tapers in, it hides a lot of the added volume. The field of view cones I had to cut out from the form in the last episode are really saving me here. That constraint forced me to cut down the design, so even though the overall volume of my enclosure is going to be much larger than the Oculus, I think it's going to look slimmer because that form is not as blocky. So that's looking pretty solid. I think I'm good to keep developing out the enclosure without having to make any major design revisions, which is great news. This is always a fun stage of the design process. The first steps of going from an idea that only exists on paper to something that you can physically hold in your hands. It always really gets me inspired to see where the project will go. In the next episode, I'm going to get into the custom face gasket part of the design. This is going to involve talking about the future of industrial design and a lot of the technology and methods used in bringing a complete physical product to market. I'm going to talk about injection molding, 3D printing, and 3D scanning really digging into all the fun tech out there and see how to leverage it for creating new things. Can't wait.